So let's get started with this uh, scholarly snippets. This, of course, is a scholarly snippet about Cochrane systematic reviews. It's an introduction to searching the Cochrane Library. I am Megan Drito Wagand. I am the Education Outreach Librarian from Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine in the Georgia campus. So a little bit about this workshop, Scholarly Snippets is a series to help you advance your research skills and support your activities. And the point of this particular Scholarly Snippet is twofold. One is that if you are in the clinical field, I want to show how Cochrane can help you identify best treatment plans for patients. And if you're doing research, help identifying potential research topics, research gaps of knowledge. Oops, sorry about that. So first and foremost, what is the Cochrane Library? It is a registered not-for-profit organization, leading resource for systematic reviews in healthcare. And importantly, it's peer reviewed by a Cochrane Review Group. What does this all mean? It means that it's an organization that goes through huge amounts of data, whether it's reviews, systematic reviews, meta-analysis, and helps uh, analyze all of this data to come up with answers about recommended treatments, as well as what's the leading consensus based on research for various um, medical conditions. So let me go ahead and do a quick demo. For those of you joining me from PCOM, the way to access this is from the library homepage, of course, going to databases and Cochrane Library. So this is the home screen for Cochrane Library. And there's a few things there's the Cochrane Reviews, Searching Clinical Answers, but what I'm going to focus on is the, the ability to search. So you can, of course, always just start with their simple search, defaults to title, abstract, and keyword. Note that you can search by any number of different options, but I'm going to click on the advanced search. Um, <laughs> and you can actually see a previous search. Um, I'm going to just do a quick demo for um, what, what if I'm looking for whether midwifery um, will help pregnant women. Um, as everybody knows, there's quite a few, um, it's, it's kind of a hot topic with how can we reduce uh, fertility in pregnancy. So there's a few options. One is you can send it to the search manager, which is here. You can add search limits. For example, if you just want um, the content type, and I'll go over what these mean, um, date published, this can be pretty useful if you're just trying to see if there was anything updated. Um, I do like if you're just doing a basic search, searching word variations, and Cochrane Group is, a, is uh, just subject. And I'm going to close that out and just do a simple search. So Cochrane results all pop up and populate underneath your search bar. So if you're ever using a bigger search menu and you don't see the results, just scroll down, they're right there. So the main tab that it defaults to are these Cochrane reviews. A Cochrane review is their version of their systematic reviews. So this is um, where someone has gone through all of the data and come up with a um, answer for us. Uh, Cochrane protocol is a Cochrane review um, that's in process. They are doing the research but have not made a final decision yet. Trial, no, um, actually the next couple of tabs, there's not really, um, doesn't really need a lot of explanations. This is literally a clinical answer. So if you're asking specifically for pregnant women, 
What are the effects of midwife-led and trained traditional birth attendant care? You click on this. It takes you and it gives you a clinical answer. It gives you the comparisons. So um, you have all sorts of outcomes and you have a narrative result, risk of bias, relative of factor mean. So it tells you uh, very much uh, going back to all the research. I'm gonna go back to these Cochrane reviews because this is what I wanna spend the majority of my time on because this is where the real um, meat of the Cochrane review is. Quick note about filter results. Of course, there's by date. Um, status is something that I want to point out because as everybody should know, uh, as time uh, progresses, conclusions can change based on new research. So if what you're focusing on is, has the conclusion of the best treatment option changed, you can actually filter by that. You can filter by review type, intervention, or just a overview, and of course, by topic. So in this case, I am going to go to interventions during pregnancy to prevent preterm birth. And there are, I'm immediately going to point out the contents. So yes, it has an abstract, but also very importantly, you can go straight to a plain language summary, which is always useful because it's exactly what it sounds like. Plain language means it's about an eighth grade reading level, so they do their best to take out any jargon. This makes Cochrane a lot more accessible to research. Uh, so what's the issue? Why is it important? What evidence did they find? Here they're analyzing 83 systematic reviews. What is the outcome? Here's a clear benefit, clear harm, possible benefit, possible harm. And it, it, it goes through all of the different outcomes. So author's conclusions is also important for those of you in clinic, implications for practice. If you're doing research, this is very important. They will have an implications for research. Um, so they will almost always give a suggestion such as formal consensus work is needed to establish standardized language for overviews and to draw limits for their interpretation. In other words, uh, this can be an area in which you can look at in one shot, not only what research has already been done on a topic, but where are there gaps in the knowledge that would be great places to start your research? So a few other things to note if you scroll down here on this tab, you can also view this very useful about this review. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on information and you can see the basic stuff, also metrics, which is always interesting. However, um, if I continue to scroll down, uh, where are we? Ver version history. You can see when was this published? When was it last updated? And this is also always useful looking at keywords. Um, it gives you the mesh terms in this case, uh, which is useful if you're continuing on with your research. Before I get distracted with showing you other things that Cochrane can offer, I'm going to go back to the search and show you more about the searching bars. So yes, this first, if if you look under advanced search, we have three, or I'm sorry, four different tabs. The default is the simple search. And again, you can filter by title. It defaults to title, abstract, and keyword, but you can look into all sorts of different things, such as um, just abstract. If you're really searching for something, there's not a lot of research, you could do alt text. I don't typically advise doing that. If you are, now let me actually clear this. Um, uh, note, 
while I'm clearing this is that Cochrane keeps all your previous searches until you clear it like I just did. So you can just search directly in here. So um, you could type in midwife and pregnancy and click on continue. And you can see here that it will give you a number. This is how many results pop up. If you click it, it will populate your results underneath. Um, and again, we have the tabs, the conclusions changed, etc. But as you should be aware, doing a general search isn't going to be the most accurate search. So we have, um, it says here 160 results, but if you look here, it's 1,300. The difference is that it's split between Cochrane reviews, Cochrane protocols, trials, and special collections and clinical answers. So just know that it does do that because it wants to focus on their Cochrane reviews first and foremost. Um, so one thing you can do is to make your search more specific is of course you can go to medical terms. So say I'm going to add pregnancy and I type that in, click on look up, and it tells me that, okay, pregnancy is my mesh term. Um, it gives me the phrase matches. It gives me all the trees. It gives me the ability to search with exploded trees, which means not just pregnancy, the term itself, but it would also search all of these specific topics underneath it. If you just want to search just pregnancy and you don't want to have to worry, for example, about animal pregnancy, high-risk pregnancy, you can, of course, click on single mesh term unexploded, and that would search just pregnancy, not any of these topics underneath it. In this case, I will just click on explode all trees. Um, it does give you a preview on how many trials and Cochrane reviews are on this specific mesh term. You can go ahead and view results directly here. You can also click on this button to add to search manager. And here you can see it has um, added my mesh descriptor here together with the results. But I wanted to also add in the factor of midwife. So I'm going to search midwife. And you can see there's two terms here. I'm not sure which is the best to use, but I'm going to click on look up. And you can see it gives me midwifery here. I am going to go ahead and click on um, add to search builder here. And you can see midwifery is there are now um, 556 results there. However, these two are individual searches and they are not combining the two searches. So Cochrane does a, something a little weird in that it asks you to do a little search. Um, so if you see here, there's number one, two, and three, these are lines. So if I click on number two and then I'm adding and and number three, and you click on continue here, now I have a search which has combined the mesh terms of pregnancy and midwifery. If you ma manually want to type in these things, you can um, all in one line instead of doing this little um, search which you're writing number two and number three. You do have to add the pound symbol if you don't you will get um, results for anything that's in uh, that has the number two or the number th or and the number three. So keep in mind that the pound sign does have to be used. Um, so that's very quickly how to use the advanced search manager. It does, in addition, have a Pico search. So um, I'm just going to give a very quick. Um, pregnancy, and you can always, of course, click on lookup 
which gives you access to your mesh terms again. And you might want to click on a normal pregnancy. Maybe you want to click on um, low risk pregnancy. There's a high risk pregnancy, et cetera. So just keep in mind that you can always click on lookup. Um, and of course, PICO stands for Population Intervention Comparison and Outcome. So um, this, if pregnancy is our population. To add another search term, you of course click on the plus sign and it defaults to adding it with and. And I'm going to say midwife. And again, you can always click on um, the lookup. If you click on the specific terms, um, you can let's see. I'm sorry, scroll down. You can click on run search. And you can see that you now have population and intervention here. Um, you can actually come control if it's your population or intervention comparison. Um, for our third result, I'm just going to say, um, oh, what's a good uh, outcome? Survival. But I'm not clear at all whether that's the proper term to use. However, you could use it. Um, and of course, it says outcome. Depending on what you're doing, it knows that survival is probably the desired outcome in this case. If it's something more generic, it will ask, ask you as it does in the case of up here, if it's your population intervention comparison or outcome. Um, in general, I'm gonna click on run search. I would say it doesn't matter as much in Cochrane um, to do a PICO, but it is always an option for you. And you can see here that um, if you're searching all three terms, survival is probably not what um, is the correct term. So if you um, if you eliminate that, you can see here we have a midwife led continuity models versus other models of care for child bearing women. And here you can see that midwives are being used as a comparison for something. If you click on show PICOs, it will show you exactly how it's being cataloged as a PICO. Here's our population, intervention, comparison, outcome. So see that just by eliminating survival gave me this result and I look at the outcome and I'm looking at fetal death preterm in, uh, infant, et cetera. So the, if you want to continue doing research, this might be a great way of modifying your search. And of course, all of these searches, I'm sorry, these terms you can click on and it will allow you to start a search with this ter term. And you, can, and you can see here, it says as outcome and you can rebuild your search from there. Um, before I, I'm at 120, I have five more minutes before I wanna take questions. I did want to show um, one more thing. This is a specific um, Cochrane review about manipulative, I'm sorry, interventions for reducing pulled elbow in young children. Specifically, what I wanted to show in this is when you're looking at the contents, depending on the search, you can also look under supplementary materials and you can see what searching strategies did they use for their systematic review. This can be exceptionally useful if you're doing research on this topic. Um, you can also see characteristics of the studies that were included. So you can look at excluded study, awaiting classification, ongoing studies, and you can look at what method it was, participants, inclusion criteria, how many 
children were enrolled, all this uh, data. You can also look at the analysis um, complete with statistical methods. This can be extremely useful for you as a researcher. And again, of course, as I pointed out with the first article, um, it has all of the main things such as it has, this one doesn't have a PICO, but it has the plain language summary. So it defines it, the key results, quality of the evidence, and of course the author's conclusion, the implications for research as well as the implications for practice. And again, depending on how you are using Cochrane depends on which would be most useful for you. Here we have a summary of findings. Uh, again, it's just all of the data out there summarized for you. Um, one other thing, uh, of course, I pointed this out before, you can see that the dislocated um, radial head has multiple versions out there. As well as, let's look at our keywords here, and you can see here are our mesh terms, um, and here is the PICO for this specific um, article, or systematic, re Cochrane review, I should say. Okay, I know I went through everything very quickly. I have actually, and um, I am a little um, ahead of myself because I probably talked quickly. Does anyone have any questions or would like to see anything? Uh, Megan, it looks like there's a Lorraine has put something in the chat. Um, for the PICO search interface, can synonyms for each segment be included each line? Um, example, population, pregnant or pregnancy, intervention, midwife or midwifery? I think it can. Nope. It's not liking it if I copy or paste. Let me try. Um, mid the no it does not like that however what you could always do is um let me do pregnant or pregnancy and you can see here i have both as my population pregnancy and then I would have and midwife as my intervention. And then you do or midwifery. I can't spell today. I apologize. Midwifery. Again, this is my intervention. Run search. Oh, I apologize. I forget this too. Uh, it appeared that I didn't have any results. I did have results. Uh, I just had to scroll down for it. So yes, you can add Boolean into your PICO search. It just has to be on separate lines. And of course, then just make sure that you're um, showing it as both our population. Any other questions? I know this is a, I think it's a pretty quick review of Cochrane. Um, I did want to actually show, you can get a very complicated, um, a, as complicated as you really want. In this case, you can have all of, you can do your Pico search uh, right here in the search manager. Can actually see in my uh, screenshot that at the time Pico search was beta. It hasn't been out there that long, so sometimes I do just use search manager out of habit. Cochrane itself has lots of training in their training hub. I do advise using it. Um, there is a wealth of information in Cochrane. 
Um, Megan, I yes. don't know if you know this answer, but what um, what's the difference between Cochrane trials and clinicaltrials.gov? That is a great question. Um, I don't know it either, so. <laughs> I don't know the answer offhand. I can guess um, that any, I don't like guessing when I'm being recorded. However, if I had to guess, <laughs> anything on Cochrane has been peer reviewed. So my guess is that the Cochrane trials have been reviewed by people, um, or people being employees of Cochrane. Um, that is a great question. Thank you, Lorraine, for that question. <laughs> now, I, after this, I'm going to go look that up to verify what I said. You might want to do that too. Please don't take uh, my words. That someone, Sharon is saying clinicaltrials.gov is a registry of all clinical trials. Cochrane is a much higher quality info, but not as comprehensive, which makes Thank sense. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Us presenters are not all knowing. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Megan. I did put in the um, in the chat box uh, the survey link for this, um, the link to our YouTube and the link for our next presentation, which will be finding a good fit for author manuscripts, always a hot topic. That'll be on October 17th. So if you wanna sign up. Um, and we do appreciate you doing the survey and giving us suggestions uh, for feedback for future presentations. Um, so thank you, Megan, for presenting and thank you everyone for attending. We appreciate it.